Good morning, afternoon, or evening, everyone. My name is Elavaris, a senior player moderator for League of Angels Fire Raiders. This is part three of Building Your Team, where we take a look at male heroes, which ones work well together, and male team compositions, and where we also take a look at which angels you should be using, whether you're free to play or pay to play. So, without further ado, let's hop right into it. So first, I'm going to just go over each decent male hero. I'm going to go over uh, their pros and cons, generalize. I'm not going to go super in-depth, and then probably talk about a, a little bit about how you can form your team composition around a certain hero. So starting off, let's take a look at Headless Horseman. Headless Horseman um, is mainly useful because he can work in the front line in the late game, mainly thanks to his dodge stats, especially when combined with a six-star angel. Um, he's not as good early to mid game, uh, first because you can't get him, uh, you have to unlock from the ancient arena, but mainly just because he doesn't an offer enough damage to be viable as a back laner, and he's not tanky enough to be viable as a front laner, so until you can get that 6 star angel, until you can get those high, le high rune levels and high dodge stats on him, that's when you can use him in the front line, albeit he is still a little bit squishy. So, um... He will work well with another line damage dealer, so if you're not running a full male team, if you're running someone like Nightblade, you can run uh, her behind him and you get a full line of damage. Um, Draconia would work behind him as well, but obviously those are female, so if you want a male, so there's obviously less fi uh, male uh, line damagers. But um, you could maybe run someone like Byron, if you're deciding to run Byron, but we'll go into that later. So, um... His life steal is nice. It's not his life steal and rage steal is nice. His uh, yeah, his life steal and his rage steal is nice. His life steal doesn't it doesn't give him like too much life, so it's not amazing. His rage steal is nice. It actually does quite a bit of rage. Helps him get that ult off pretty soon. In the front line though, he is hard countered by CC, especially by a Pyrona. Pyrona will shut him down completely. Moving on to the next hero, we're gonna take a look at Elder Dwarf. So Elder Dwarf is a very good early to mid game tank, and this is mainly because of, first of all, his life drain. So I'd like to make uh, the clear, the I'd like to stress the difference between a life, I think this would be a life drain versus a life steal. It may not be, a, I don't know what it would really be called. But this is not a life steal, which means regardless of how much damage he does, he will still get a, a great heal off of hitting a hero. It doesn't matter if he hits 20,000 damage, doesn't matter if he hits 10 damage. He's still gonna get the same amount of healing, which is good. Because if this was a life steal, it would rely on how much damage he did, and obviously as a tank, he's not gonna do much damage. Indefectible is obviously really good for him, because uh, the shield is really nice. He pops it up first thing in the fight, and because we have this do as much damage as possible meta, it's good to have him pop in it right away. It doesn't block tons and tons of damage, but it does block extra damage if there was a attack that would break the shield instantly. That said, he is countered pretty hard by CC since he does rely on that shield and that life drain to keep him alive, so a Pyrona will shut him down as well. His, his line stun is nice, albeit a little unpredictable. It is a good two-turn uh, stun that can hit a backline target, which is what you want. Next up, we're going to take a look at Knight Sentinel. Knight Sentinel is one of the best archers in the game. He has extremely high damage. He has lots and lots of crit adding to his high damage. And he has armor piercing. And armor piercing is the biggest thing. This is what makes him so good. Just because there's a lot of heroes that have quite a lot of toughness. Uh, not toughness, but by toughness, I mean defensive stats. So, physical defense and magical defense. For example, Light Envoy for Lumia. For example, those heroes that you put in the front line, you probably put Warden Crests on them. Meaning, he is really good against them because he can break through that extra defense. His double shot, uh, his double shot range hits extremely hard. Um, it can bring down a frontliner almost instantly. My Lumia, even with Warden Crest, gets one, can get one shot by his double shot range. He is susceptible, um, yeah, he is very susceptible to dodge, because he does not have much of a hit rate boost. 
coming in with the new astral training training that has hit rate it may be a little bit better but he's still susceptible to dodge but overall he's a very good uh male archer to have on your team as a dps jack hollow obviously since he's pay to play i don't have much experience with him um but i'll give you what i can his ghost bats is really nice for the silence if i can you know, scroll down yeah that'll be nice Ghost Bats is really nice. It'll target the two targets with the highest attack and will silence them, which is huge because if you can silence both their two highest damage dealers, they cannot use any abilities, and most damage dealers rely on their abilities to deal damage. So therefore, getting that silence off is crucial, although it, I believe it is on like the second or third turn that he casts it, so it may, be, um, it may activate a little too late to help you. But it's still nice when it does happen. He deals quite a lot of damage. And he fits the meta well. Because the meta is f for damage dealers. Is flash crests with attack percent. Because you want to deal as much damage as possible. As quickly as possible. So because his, many of his abilities. Scale with the amount of agility he has. That makes f stacking flash crests on him even better. He'll, f he'll attack first, and he'll do way more damage because of that agility boost. So hit the meta really fits his abilities. Next up, we have Hellhound. His lifesteal attack... Um, his lifesteal is good for some moderate sustain. It's nothing amazing. It's not going to keep him alive single-handedly, but obviously it's nice. His rage steal is also nice, but it acts... It doesn't really act as a rage steal, more as a rage gain preventer just because it typically deals a decent amount of damage, so the damage he deals kind of outdoes the rage that he steals, so it's like, he steals some rage, but then he deals damage, so the rage go bar goes back up, so it doesn't really matter as much, like, he's not really making them lose rage, he's just not making them gain rage, so that's one thing you have to be aware of. He will do solid damage to an enemy squishy backline target, so I'll uh, look out for that, he's a pretty solid damage there, assuming he hits him, although he is can be susceptible to dodge, so you have to be careful about that. Although this, because this increases his, his hit chance, could help him out there. His shield is good for his own backline, uh, the Guard of Wind, that'll uh, decrease his all damage by 21%. At this level, at a higher level, it'll obviously probably stack up to about 30%, which is obviously good to help your backline, give him some more survivability. Exorcist. His AoE silence is awesome. Uh, assuming it hits, and it has the chance of silencing your whole team, which is insane. Silence is such a powerful spell. So that is a really good ability. I re his silence is amazing. His purification can be really clutch if you're facing some Condi and stun teams. However, he is a very situational hero, and you give up, you give up a lot of DPS to have him in your team. So obviously he's given you basically no DPS, the purification is really good if you get, you're against people with a lot of CC and condies, but obviously that's situational, and because a lot of things, a lot of the DPS right now is flat damage, Draconia is like flat, hard damage, Shadowstalker, flat, hard damage, Night Sentinel, flat, hard damage, you know, all these damage dealers is all just flat damage, there's not much condi around, so his purification becomes useless. So he's really situational, you give up a lot of DPS in your backline to put him in. Uh, next up, we have Nether Knight. He is a very good early to mid game tank, although he doesn't work super well late game. Uh, this is for a few reasons, mainly because his defenses aren't amazing. His he's very susceptible to magic damage, and he relies a lot on his shield. Um, yeah, this light shield early to mid like this shield is amazing. He, he can be at no health. Pop the shield, get back up to full because of it. It can it blocks a lot of damage and heals him because it converts the damage to HP. So the shield itself is amazing. But that means he basically relies on this shield to keep him alive. If this shield is not proc, if he gets shut down by CC, he's dead. Like, there's nothing you can do to save him. His ultimate is useless just because it's life steal. That means it relies on how much damage he does, and because he's a tank, he hardly does any damage, so he's not really gaining any HP. He's gaining like 3k HP, which is basically nothing and pretty useless. Uh, next up, we're going to take a look at Bamboo Fighter, one of the best DPS in the game. Insane damage per second. Hey, look, I can upgrade the stairs. Nice. Insane damage per second. He can one-shot most backline targets. He's definitely one-shot at my backline quite a lot. 
Um, he has very clutch rage gain. He, a lot of the time he can alt by round two, especially if he's hit, which makes him very good uh, in this meta of dealing as much damage as possible as quickly as you can. He's always using an ability. There's no such thing as an auto on him unless he's chaos. So he's always dealing good damage. He always has good side effects. He's got that backline stun with his aerial crush. Amazing damage with bamboo flurry and lo lowers the target's attack. But that doesn't even matter because typically he just kills them anyway. So he, if you have him, use him. He's very, very solid DPS choice. Um, oh, one other thing. Uh, you can use him in the front line, although I would not suggest it as much just because... Well, on the attack, go ahead. On the defense, I would not suggest it because he is shut down hard by CC. And if he gets sheeped, he's obviously doing nothing for your team and you want him alive to deal his damage. So on defense, back line, on attack, you can put him in the front line just because you can control him. Illusionist, obviously, I've never really used him. I've never really seen anyone use him. Uh, it's hard to say if he's really that good, so, you know, the jury's still out on that one. Um, King of Bones, yeah, he's, he's a little subpar. Not really your most, your greatest DPS choice. His Blaze is nice uh, because it does quite a lot of damage, although it is on a chance, so you really rely on that chance for his DPS because that's his biggest DPS. It, it ignores defense because it's a condi. It's a, yeah, it's a condi, so it ignores defense, making it have the capacity to do a lot of damage. But he completely relies on that burning blade. His chilling sweep, his first ability, uh, is really strong if he can hit the back line, but that's assuming he can hit the back line. He needs to bring down the front line first. So it's really pretty useless on the front line. It does decrease defense, so it's nice, but it will hardly do any damage. So, you really want him on a backline, it's hard to get him on the backline. So, he's, yeah, he's subpar, he's squishy, he doesn't have amazing DPS and relies on his blaze, which comes at a percent chance. Next up, we have Astral Hunter. He's got pretty decent damage, his ulti is really, is pretty, not really good, is pretty good because it brings AoE defense decrease, which is really nice, especially on their backline, because that means um, you can deal even more damage to the, to their backline and bring them down very very quickly um he, although another thing to say about his ultimate is that it doesn't have enough enough damage to bring down uh, any hero in one hit meaning that he will he has the potential just to feed rage um what else do i what else can i say about him yeah, he can do some good backline damage with ult and his, and his arrow rain. His fourth ability can do some good damage, but not enough to bring down the backline on his own. And therefore, if you don't have any other heroes that can hit the backline, he'll just feed rage. Rose Knight, he's good as a brick wall early to late game. He's got very good defensive stats, and he has a lot of dodge, especially with a six-star angel. The issue he runs into is the Valkyrie effect, where he's just a brick wall. His Rosemary is useless. It's a damage-dealing ability in a tank, meaning obviously for... First, it's not going to do any damage. Uh, second, it doesn't help the team at all. So it's useless because it's damage dealing ability on a tank who has no damage. So uh, another uh, pro about him is that he does not get shut down as hard by CC. Obviously because he doesn't rely on shields and lifesteal to keep him alive. Um, but his main con is that he will not do much for your team. Uh, he'll only really act as a brick wall, which is you want more team support in your team than uh, just a brick wall. Just a brick wall. Berserker Claw. Um, he falls off pretty hard late game. His damage is very lackluster. Um, especially like his ultimate will hardly do any damage, especially since the most time he's hitting a tank who has very high defensive stats. His saving grace is his boomerang. Like, this is really the only thing you use him for, is a chance to throw a double blade axe to one turret in the rear line, which can stun them for two rounds. It does a substantial amount of damage. So, it's that's really his saving grace. If he uses that boomerang, hits that backline target, locks it down. That's the only reason you'd use him. So, there, obviously, because of that, there's better options you can have. His damage is lackluster, so... Yeah, he's good early to mid-game, falls off as you get farther into the late game. Dark Paladin is a pretty good tank, especially now that we have this meta where you deal as much damage as possible, as fast as possible, but where it's a lot of single target, like, burst skills. It's not like, it's not really damage over time. So, his revive makes him really good against 
very overpowered heroes like Draconia and Shadowstalker, who will kill any frontline tank in one turn, no matter who they are. So him being allowed to revive makes it so that he can survive the extra turn, whereas any other tank would not against those high damage heroes. Um, his ulti is good because it doesn't feed rage. The enemy cannot obtain rage from this attack. So that's nice. It It's not as super helpful just because uh, it he it's damage dealing on a tank. It's not going to do much damage. His stun is nice, uh, it, although it is random, so you can stun useless targets like a frontline ro like a frontline rose knight or something. So it's a pretty situational. And his damage deduction with his awakening seems good. Damage deduction by 69%. That seems pretty high. Although I haven't tested him out. Maybe it's talking about I don't know some other thing that I'm not aware of. But it could be pretty good. I obviously don't know just because I don't run a mail team. Fire on the black, uh, not your overall DPS option. He has decent line damage with his ultimate. If he crits, he'll do a lot of damage to an enemy, to a squishy enemy backliner. He can feed rage with his lightning storm. It does do a decent amount of damage, but it will feed rage because of that damage. And because he can't really kill a hero on its own unless he gets that ultimate off and he doesn't have amazing rage gain. So he can just end up feeding rage and allowing himself to be killed by letting the enemy team get their, ult get their ultimates off. Overall, there's better DPS options that you can use instead of Byron, but you may be able you can use him on a second or third team if you're running male, um, male crests. Next, uh, oh, I missed Exo in my notes here. Exo was a pretty solid choice for quite a while. I'm pretty sure he's still pretty good. Just because his heals are amazing when he's in uh, healing mode. His heals are very, very strong. Can heal a team up very quickly. His damage is pretty good. He does have um, the scattering flame that caused the burning effect. Does some good damage in the bur The blaze is pretty nice. Uh, penetrating fire can do a decent amount of damage to the back line. I don't really have um, much experience with him. I haven't really used him at all so because i don't want a male team but he is a pretty solid choice you could use him on your front line he's got very good sustain for your team and he's got fairly decent damage so he's pretty good team choice last person last but not least obviously shadow stalker op crazy dps use him if you have him nothing else to be said right then so that's all male heroes um before we hop into angels so when you're looking when you're looking to build a male team, obviously you want what I was talking about before in the female uh, team section was what you want in a good team. Oh, okay, I really good. Right. So obviously you want heroes that can work together. So if you've got someone, if you say you have Astral Hunter, right? You know that Astral Hunter cannot kill an enemy hero on his own. So he needs someone to help him kill the backline. This is when you don't say, let's put in Night Sentinel, because Night Sentinel only hits the front line for the most part of the fight, whereas Astro Hunter will hit a lot of the back line. So Night Sentinel will not help him kill the back line any faster. You need some other kind of back line DPS to round him out so that he will be able to kill their back line. That's when you get in Hellhound. You say, Hellhound can hit the back line. He can help Astral Hunter finish it off. That's when you bring in Bamboo Fighter. He can hit the back line. He can help him. You want to stack... If you are going to have someone that hits the back line, you need other male heroes that can hit the back line. That is enough said. Obviously, every good team needs a, a decent amount of control. I forgot to mention this about Headless Horseman, but his silence is really nice. Uh, it's got a very high proc rate at higher levels. So his silence can be really strong. That's obviously hard CC, especially in this meta, where a lot of damage comes from abilities. So silence is really nice. So you want, you want CC or silences on your team. You put in Elder Dwarf, say, he's got a stun. Okay, that's good, we have a stun. Put in Headless Horseman. Okay, we've got a stun, we've got a silence. Uh, you want to be careful about stacking teams that are just like Nether Knight, Rose Knight, Knight Sentinel, Hellhound, and like someone else in the back line. Um, and like Astral Hunter. I mean, then you're just, you, you have zero CC on your team. You need CC. Because if you can't out-damage the enemy for some reason, if they've got a better hero, you need to make sure that they can't bring down your whole team in one turn. You need that CC. So make sure you've got a good balance of CC. Stat if you have Night Sentinel, Night Sentinel obviously brings no CC. Make sure you've got someone who's got some crowd control. Get a Bamboo Fighter for his backline. Um, backline shutdown. 
get a, um, get an elder dwarf so that he's got his he's got his boomerang dark paladin for his stun albeit it's random so it's not as good berserker claw for his backline stun lock down their backliner or or um, if you don't like if you don't want as much deep oh yeah exorcist is an obvious option for, uh, with his ultimate can quite a bit of lockdown. If you don't want to, if you don't have a lot of um, control stacking heroes, you can just ring run and if you've got if you can just run insane DPS like run Shadow Stalker, run Bamboo Fighter. You don't even need control because you're gonna bring their team down in one in one turn anyways. So yeah, make sure you've got a good balance. Uh, sustain some sustain is nice. You don't want to place an overemphasis on sustain. You don't want to stack up your team with Exorcist and then you know you don't okay. Like Exorcist, I'd only put him on. I wouldn't really put him in your arena team, just because um, you want more. He, he's pretty situational, especially this purification, and you want as much DPS as possible. Putting him in sacrifices a lot of DPS. So su some sustain is nice, although you don't want to get purely sustained heroes. Typically, typically you don't want purely sustained heroes. So. Um, some sustain on a damage dealing hero can be nice so like hellhound's backline like he he's a lot of damage but he does have that extra backline uh, shield to help to help your backline so some sustain although he still is bringing good dps so you want to make sure that you've got that it's not just sustain that they're bringing so yeah overall that's all i can say i'll probably have another video where i'll go into um specific team compositions you can run like if you want to run mail and you're free to play what is a good team comp you can use but for now i'm gonna now go into angels so i haven't experimented with a whole lot of angels um let's start so it does not really matter what mid game angel you choose late game is all that matters so no one really cares like it doesn't matter if you're if you choose an angel in the mid game that's a little lackluster because all the mid game angels are lackluster they're none of them is going to do anything super special so um make sure uh that you don't worry too much about that just pick a mid game angel it really doesn't matter just make it's late game that accounts so um uh yeah i'd like to say i don't really have many i haven't had experience with a lot of good angels because i am free to play i just have my liberita here my favorite angel well thus far anyway who's i got up to six star um so I don't have experience with a lot of other angels. So let's say start by saying right now, best free-to-play angel just released Pandora. Main reason for this, she can go up to level 100. This is uh, the highest level cap thus far, and level cap is huge because it allows you to get uh, to give even more bonuses to stats for your heroes. Be a level 95 angel. A uh, level uh, 90, a uh, max level 95 angel and a max level 100 angel are pretty. There's pretty big difference there because a max level 100 angel will have uh, a better percent added for each stat. So I think like, what's an example? Everybody knows this so, so uh, for example, if you have like Pandora and you compare that to like Michaela. Every level that you give one of Pandora's stat boosting abilities, it could boost it by like a hundred, whereas Michaela's would only boost it by like thirty. So when you, if you compare a max level hundred angel to a max level ninety five angel, it's like um, you've got this one ability where it's um, you've got Pandora's where it's like it boosts it by a hundred, but then the other one you boost it by, but then in the max level ninety five you only boost it by like eighty five or ninety. So in the long run, you get a lot more stats out of someone that's got a max level of a hundred. So, um, yeah, uh, lost my train of thought there. So yeah, uh, overall she's really good because of her max level 100. I will say that this ability does look very good. Create a shield on two allies with the lowest HP, increasing their damage reduction and reflecting damage back to their attackers. Reflecting is huge here just because the, de the meta deals as much damage as possible as quickly as possible. If she can get that damage reduction up, those extremely heavy hitters on the back line are going to get hit with massive damage right back at them after they fire off their abilities. So that is a pretty solid ability. This one here, uh, damage all heroes, reduce their defense and resilience. Damage is going to be negligible. It always is on angels. 
Reduce their defense and resilience. Depends on how much uh, it reduces, but this can be good, although it's lackluster compared to this ability. This is her shiny ability, I would say, right here. And with the lowest HP, usually the backline, so that's even better. So, um... She's also really good because she's not that hard to get. She is in the Angel Trial Shop for 2,000 gems for 5 Stole Stones. I've, I'd saved up about 200,000 just because I didn't have anything else to spend it on. So I'm maxing her out right now. I started 3 days ago while I was already at 4 stars. So She is a free-to-play, which is huge. So you free-to-play players, this is who I would go for for your late game. You want Pandora right now. Um... Yeah, so that's all I have to say about her. Right now, probably the best free-to-play angel, probably the best pay-to-play, just because there's no other level 100 angels yet. Uh, Isolde uh, seems pretty good, although, again, I haven't really tested her. Um, the, this one, it, this ability is pretty huge. The damage is not what I'm looking at. It's the preventing rage gain, which is big against uh, team, which is big against most teams, especially because... Um, where is he? Damage three targets with the highest attack. So she's going to be preventing their DPS from gaining rage for a turn. That means that they can't ultimate, and usually the DPS, the ultimate, is where they get a lot of their damage from. So that's what makes this ability quite, quite good. Uh, well, at least it seems so, assuming it procs decently often. This one, heavy damage. I really doubt heavy damage. Tunis with the highest HP means it's going to hit. The tanks prevents them from being healed. There's really no healing right now in the meta, so probably not a very useful ability. You're really going to want the Freezing, uh, the Freezing Tempest is her best ability right now. So next we're going to look at Celeste. Celeste has always been a top choice just because of her stun. Her stun is her shining, uh, yes, this one. Her stun is her shining ability. It can, um... Summons Light Sword that targets two enemies with the lowest HP, damaging and stunning them for two turns. Lowest HP means by default it's going to be the backline. And because you've probably got a lot of backline DPS, it's the backline's always going to be at the lowest HP, which means you're going to lock up their damage dealer. So that's really good. Although she is falling off just because there are uh, other angels introduced with higher max levels. So she's you're getting a lot less stats from her than you are getting from another angel. And as the level gets higher and her level gets lower in comparison to theirs, uh, her stun starts to miss more and more. Next, Victoria. Eh, that's not Victoria. I Victoria is decent with... She does have that buff removal from the enemy. And she does have this um, removing two debuffs from Alice, the lowest HP on your team. The issue, though, that she has is that there's just, it's really just raw damage. Like, that's the meta, right? Like, you don't get much Condi. It's all just raw, raw damage. So she's really not uh, removing debuffs on your team. There's really not many debuffs to remove. It's very situational. Um, so overall, I wouldn't say she's super amazing. Use her if you have her, but I'm free to play, so I haven't really left her up. And then there's Liberita. Um, one thing I will say about Liberita, okay, uh, in Arena, she's not very good. Her damage is extremely lackluster. The lowering defense is nice, but it's only for like one round. This ability is very interesting. It disables buff gain. Typically, this is seen in disabling shields. In Arena, her targeting is terrible with the AI. Like, I honestly... Oof, man, the AI for that needs some work. She just targets the most random targets with it. And... Uh, it's really like it's really never useful like you'll use it and it's like if someone was to shield that target the next turn after she used that it's good because the shield won't proc but you don't get many shields popping up in arena and you need the shield on the target that she hits on that same turn so it's not very useful one thing i will say is that she's amazing in the demon trial the reason for this is because in the demon trial especially today we have uh pandora i believe because it's friday pandora she has this shield, Chaos Shroud. Starting from the first round, every three rounds, create a shroud for one round that reduces damage by 90% and reflects 50% of damage. Obviously, this is very devastating for your DPS heroes. But what's huge is that um, what's huge 
is that why why am i going to heroes what's huge for the third time is that this ability will neglect shields it will make shields useless for that turn so you know that every three turns uh, pandora's going to be shooting off that shield so you just have to use this one turn in advance bam there is no shield for pandora she does not get the 90 percent damage reduction your heroes do not get affected by the damage reflection so it's actually really really good in demon trial in demon invasion and when i did demon invasion a lot she was the pinnacle of my success allowing me not to get nuked down by my own hero's damage reflection and to be able to make sure they don't get damage reflection either meaning i don't time out so she's really good for demon invasion i will say that a little luck laster the arena luck la luck laster lack luster what am i saying right then so uh Okay, after this long video, I don't know exactly how long it's been going on for, probably like 25 minutes or so. Thank you all for watching. I hope you found this video useful. I will be back with a part four, and it'll be the final part of the series. And it'll go into specific team compositions that you should use. So for a female team, what team composition should I be using? And it's like, okay, here's one that if you're free to play, you can use. And you'll be like, you get Light Envoy in the front lane, Lum Light Envoy in the front, Lumia in the front, Pyrona in the back, Nightblade in the back, Dragon Queen in the back, you know, something like that, right? And then and then I'll be like, for male, you got this, and I'll, I'll give obviously different options and for free to play and pay to play. So I'll come at a video that goes more to depth on specific team compositions. But for now, I hope you all enjoyed the video. It took a, a decent amount of time to make, to record, and now to edit, and then and before to plan it map out what I was going to say. Got my uh, notes in front of me. But one and a half, uh, three sides or so. So yeah, thank you all uh, for watching. Thank you for taking a little part out of your day uh, just to come watch this video. It really means a lot, guys. I thank you all again for watching and have a good night.